Hey guys, First Hand Account here with another video and today I'm going to be talking about the poor man's Leica or better known as the Canonet QL17 G3 or just the QL series in general. I don't really subscribe to the belief system that this is a poor man's Leica but I can see why some people might say that. The contrast and the sharpness that you get from this lens is really 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 characteristic of a Leica lens but I don't think that it holds up you know a 40 millimeter summa and the 40 millimeter 1.7 that's on the Canonet. I don't think that they directly one-to-one -one compare, but it definitely gets really, really close to the same contrast as the Leica lens, but I think it falls short in the sharpness. So I actually got my own Canonet QL17 from my father. He bought it brand new in 1973 and then passed it down to me. So I've used it over the past few years. He didn't even remember that it was in the closet and when I started shooting professionally a lot a few years ago he passed it down to me and said hey if you have any use for this camera you can have it and I really like rangefinder cameras so I immediately grabbed it and kept it forever. I put rolls through it every once in a while but I don't really shoot with it super often but I had an opportunity to shoot with it the other day because my buddy Miles who was in the first behind the eye series that I did the short documentary series I do on my friends who are artists so he was the first person that I interviewed for that series and he's actually moving to California forever so I already miss him a ton he moved a couple days ago I shot this role of Fuji Superior 400 over the past three months and I had about 10 frames left so I met up with Miles a week ago and just finished that role. We hung out and just shot around his house so I'm gonna go through you know all the shots that I got with Miles and show you guys you know my results. So the first photo that I got was a portrait of Miles on top of his roof so we smoked a little bit and just reminisced about you know all the old times and meeting at MCAT. I met him at the Minneapolis College of Art and Design so I wanted to get a really solid portrait of him to remember him by and uh, I thought this was a great spot on his roof um, I thought the light was really good we were in the shade as well and the side of the house is white so all of that harsh light that's in the sky was reflecting off of the white wall behind us and was giving Miles the super soft light so I really liked that scene and I liked that this was his little nook that he kind of hangs out in every night. He kind of smokes on the roof and just chills there. So I thought that was a good place to get a portion of Miles. This is honestly my favorite shot of the whole roll. And I mean, you can probably tell why because Miles is just a really good buddy of mine and I really wanted to remember him and have a good portrait that really captured his personality. So after I took the portrait of Miles, we went down around his house and shot, you know, just around the neighborhood that he lives in. He lives kind of in uptown, but it's a little bit south from there. And we just walked around the neighborhood and tried to find some cool stuff, walked towards uptown as well and tried to find you know, any cool perspectives or buildings or anything like that. So Miles was shooting on his iPhone and shooting black and white um, only photography. So I really liked some of the stuff that he got. And then, yeah, like I said, I was just trying to finish this roll of Fuji Superior 400 that I got at Walmart. The second shot that I got was the this picture of this building, I tried to layer the building with these beautiful red flowers that were uh, planted right in front of the building itself. The building is kind of Art Deco style, I think. I'm not super, super familiar with architecture, but I really liked the style of this building. I, I think it had a really cool look and just like an old feeling to it. So I tried to frame the building up with those flowers and try to you know, show a juxtaposition between nature and man-made objects. I have been working on a series for a while that compares vegetation and man-made objects and just kind of the interplay and the relationship between those two things. So this is a photo I wanted to add to the series and I thought this one came out really well as well. The next shot is just a close up of that building itself. So I just walked a little bit closer and got a picture of the building. I, like I said, I, I don't know why, but this building caught my eye and I just wanted another picture of the building itself without any plants in it. I, this was just honestly a shot that I wanted for my personal reasons, but um, I don't know why I found the building so interesting. I just really liked it. And then the next shot is pretty obvious. I shot a picture closer up of those 
red flowers. I just really liked the red flowers and I know that Fuji tends to be a little bit warmer in terms of like the oranges and the reds and those pop a little bit more. So I wanted to shoot something that would make the film look really good but also something that I really liked when I saw it and I just really like these red flowers. I'm a huge fan of flowers in general. I just wanted to capture it the best that I could. I also like how behind the flowers the building itself is red so there's a match, a color match between the flowers themselves and the actual building. I just think that that tied the photo together a little bit better but I might have wanted to have some kind of subject in that negative space on the left. So the next photo is probably my second favorite photo that I took that day and it's a photo of uh, the Hennepin Avenue billboard with a security camera in the bottom of the frame and I just liked the relationship between the camera and the fact that they make cameras the same color as the wall a lot to try to camouflage the camera and it's something that's private only the security guards of that building or the city or whoever is running that CCTV camera only those people are gonna see the footage from that camera so it's a very private thing that's camouflaged and almost hidden and I liked how that contrasted to the build the billboard itself and the fact that billboards are super public they're meant for everyone to see they're meant to be on display and I liked the relationship between those two subjects I like to play with kind of abstract or philosophical themes and this was kind of just me exploring different things while I shot and uh, I think this came out super, super well, but let me know in the comments if you guys like this one. So the next shot is kind of a cliche shot, but I always get it when I'm shooting. Um, I always take a picture of these kind of barber shop. I don't even know what they're called, part of my age, because I don't remember what they're called. Every time I see a barber shop, I try to get a photo of it. I, I like barber shops because they give almost a nostalgic, like vintage feeling. And I really like how a lot of barber shops have really old chairs in there or like checkerboard floors, things that kind of indicate design sensibilities that were in the decades in the past and I think that there's a lot of things that they did back then that we haven't carried over into the contemporary design world that I think worked really well and I think this barbershop is a really good representation of a good mix of the modern and the traditional stuff. So this next photo is wasn't captured as well as I wanted to but I saw all of the umbrellas and all of the people at the Stella's Fish Cafe reflected. There was a building across the street that had this big facade that was almost like chrome and reflecting everything on the street in these weird patterns so I tried to line up up the people and the umbrellas to make a silhouette in the frame. I don't think it worked as well as I wanted it to but that was kind of what I was trying to go for with that one. And then the last photo I'm gonna talk about is this portrait of Miles. I really like this portrait when I put it next to the first portrait I got. I feel like the first portrait is almost like Miles idol and the second portrait is Miles in performance mode and kind of posing for the camera and more staged. And I like how when you put them next to each other, it almost shows two different people, but it's both Miles, obviously. And I think it shows a good representation of how everybody has multiple aspects of their personality, whether you're performing or whether you're you know, with your family or your significant other or you're, you know, with a group of strangers. I feel like there's always a different representation of who you are. And I think that putting these two next to each other kind of shows that. I, I want to explore this concept further because I don't think this is the strongest representation of that concept, but that's kind of what I was going for with the second portrait compared to the first portrait was trying to create like a diptych that shows a relationship between two different personalities in one person. Thank you so much for watching this video. To all my new subscribers, thank you so much for coming over and subscribing to this channel. I'm honestly super humbled that any of you guys leave comments or likes or even watch these videos at all. It truly means the world to me and uh, I just want to thank all of you guys. If you are new here, my name is Tyler. I am a photographer and filmmaker. I make videos about street photography, fine art photography, film photography, and a tiny bit about filmmaking, but it's mostly photography focused. If you guys like that kind of content, please subscribe below. If you want to check out my Instagram pages, they're down below as well. And 
And other than that, I hope you guys have a good day. Peace.